we're here. Once again, I forgot to close the shades. Once again, everybody from Australia to North Carolina to Texas is here. Fish at six. And boy, oh boy, as we say in the country, are we loaded for bear. Uh, Dave wants some good news. David, I'll give you some good news. I'm going to close the shades. What do you think of that news? Come on, Marsha. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys quarterbacking and the double O. And no, that's not sexual. It could be. Organized oatmeal here at Fish at Six. And yes, it's very cowboy uh, oriented. Cowboy cut down stuff, cowboy Super Bowl stuff, a, a an undrafted rookie free agent who's a big hot shot who just got cut. Should the Cowboys get him? Why don't you let us inform you? Thank you. Um, how's uh, boss man fat? Look, I got notes and everything. What, what I'm talking, it's very organized. Trade talk. And this isn't like the made up. <coughs> this is real. And you've come to the right place. Uncle Fish. Um, Priscilla from the Uncle Fish store called me the other day and she goes, this is the second month we're in the uh, Uncle Fish merchandise store. She goes, that first month, it was crazy crazy. She goes, this month it slowed down a little bit. And I said, you know why? Because I haven't made an issue of it, Priscilla. I haven't said to 33,000 Cowboy Nation followers, hey, why don't you go support the movement and get yourself a t-shirt? The t-shirt could say fish out which is, uh, that, that is, that month number one, month number two, ah, month number one, Fish Out was a gigantic seller. Um, and on and on and on and on. Exclusive, exclusive. So would you please, you'll see down below this, or you'll see below all our fine videos, at the risk of being a little bit too salesy, but I don't care. Which finger don't I don't care with? Um, the Priscilla Uncle Fish store. Go support Priscilla. She's very sweet. And go buy yourself a, a T-shirt. And then puff out your chest with pride. Uncle Fish pride. Um, so that's on my list of things to tell you about. No press conference today. Why not? Oh, Miss Big Mystery? No, I'll, I'll explain it. So I'm going to get to all that. And also, because we have the Super Chat. What? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, because we have the super chat, uh, you pitch in a dollar or two dollars or ten dollars or two hundred dollars. I don't care what it is. Th that's the Brie fund. Brie and I were at the star today. We hung out. We hung out. Um, so Brie bought a brought a, a friend to town, and she's in the media as well. I think she was, I think she was at like Fox Sports Arizona, and so uh, Brie couldn't be nicer. And her friend was nice. And so we came to the star. And uh, I'm gonna, I was going to show you a picture, but I might have goofed that all up. Oh, there we go. There. Just a couple of nice kids, Bree and her friend, hanging out at the star. And we gave them a little tour. And uh, very nice. Come on in, everybody. Come on into Texas. Everybody who's nice, we want you in Texas. Paul Gale is an Uncle Fish premium subscriber. Good evening. Would everybody please um, hit the like button as a reward for Fish? It seems like the like button is like, oh, you like me, Sally Field? You really like me. But that's not what it's about. It's about beating the algorithms. It's about us being able to secretly message other people in Cowboy Nation and telling them there's real cowboy stuff going on here. Um, 1053 the fan cowboy kind of stuff that goes on here. So hit the like button right now, please. Diddly, diddly, diddly. And then that tells that bypasses the proper authorities and tells Cowboy Nation this is where it's at. 
John o. Blake is here from Australia. Ethan Hogue is here. 10 days until kickoff. Yeah, huh? Brandon Wilder is here. Jason Rempo is here. He's an Uncle Fish premium subscriber. Here's Bree. Text me right now. What does she want? All right. Good. She's fantastic. Um, Ari says, Nishan Wright didn't look too good. Neither did Boss Man Fat. We'll get to a little bit of that in a little bit. Leander Texas says hello with Matthew McQueen. I wish my last name was McQueen. Fish McQueen. Eddie Romero. Fish, I can vouch for those T-shirts. Thumbs up and approved. Go to the Uncle Fish T-shirt shop and get you some. It's not. Uh, it's very reasonably priced. And uh, it's a dry fit. And it's uh, it's badass. You will be the talk of the town. Roland's Reviews checks in, of course. Arizona is here from uh, Ari. Uncle Fish is the bomb. Eh, eh, eh. Darwin, I'm fishing for Cowboys news. Rachel Sinclair is an Uncle Fish premium subscriber. Hello, Rachel. JV, what's up, Fish? Uncle Fish premium subscriber. Jason Z, I'm here, Uncle Fish, swimming in the fishbowl. Quota, I've never heard of Quota 419 before. Quota, are you new? Quota says, favorite sports show on the internet, hands down. What? Thank you. And Wildcat is here, getting ready to tell a dirty joke. Uh, it's fun to kind of get to know each other, isn't it? Um, so, JV, is Jaron Curse getting cut? Uh, Jaron Curse put on Twitter something like, this sucks. I am not aware that they are releasing Curse. So, uh, and obviously, we're going to check. Um but I'm not cutting him. He was good. He's gigantic. That is a gigantic safety. I thought when they first brought Kearse here, I thought the idea was going to be they were going to tuck him into being um, hybrid Keanu Neal. And, and that could still play. But at this, at this moment, I'm like, when he says this sucks, I assume he's playing Ms. Pac-Man and he lost because uh, he, he he established he can play. And I already know he can play on special teams. Lokes44, what's up, Uncle Fish? Has Danucci packed his bags yet? I'll get to him because this is the summer of trash. Matthew McQueen, Bree gets a Starbucks. Love you, Fish. 499 pitch in. Again, no obligation to pitch into the Uncle Fish uh, beer fund, brief fund via super chat. But if you're so inclined and you got an extra penny laying around, pitch a penny. Or like somebody did the other day, $200. It was anywhere in between. Okay. Let's start with organization. Golly. Maurice McClary, who I believe is new. Maurice, $20 pitch into the brief run. Auga. Please ask the forces to stop with the adult politics with these paid players and just play the best talent. Kennedy shown it. Now, in fairness, Kennedy has flattened out. But here's a great example of what you're talking about, Maurice, that I think is happening. They wanted boss man fat to win the cornerback job. Politically, they wanted him to win the job. Hey, look at us. We got another second round pick right. Just didn't happen. Anthony Brown was just more solid. Anthony Brown, friend of the show. Let's get him on again, shall we, soon? Uh, I'm a little biased towards Anthony Brown, but seriously, he's solid as a rock. And Bossman Fats just isn't ready yet. And has a little bit of a groin. A groin, as people in Texas call it. A groin. If you're from uh, if you if you're from where I'm from originally, you speak like the dictionary and you call it a groin, but a groin, groin, is what they call it down here. So I don't know that politics are in play. Uh, maybe you're talking about Kennedy versus Jordan Lewis. Kennedy had a really, I mean, he like flashed. That's the word that the scouts like to use. He flashed for like a week. 
Jordan Lewis had one bad game in the preseason, but Jordan Lewis is better. I mean, he's been better. I think Kennedy makes the team, but Jordan Lewis is your slot corner against Tampa Bay and Anthony Brown, a uh, native of Tampa Bay, by the way. And the reason I know that is because I tried to get tickets, regular person, expensive, fancy tickets, Cowboys at Tampa. And I talked to the Anthony Brown people and they said, we'd love to help you fish, but Anthony Brown is from Tampa and he needs his ticket. Oh yeah, that's right. Anthony Brown's looking for more tickets. He's not looking to give me any. I give, that is to say, sell. <laughs> Either way, I don't care. Thomas Garrett is here. People are bringing up Skip. Bruce is here from Texaco. Maurice asks again, so has he not even proven the best slot? Maurice Kennedy has not proven that he's better than Jordan Lewis, no. But he's in he's in the mix here and is a cool cat. We got a chance to meet him the other day. He's a cool cat. I don't know what Roland's Review and Thomas Garrett are talking about. They're, they seem to be playing footsie with each other. Chris Graham, Jabil Cox is good. Yeah. Like this might be a this might be a next year good. But he's good. Jim Laws, did you hear Skip and Shannon going off on the Cowboys? Jim, how long have you knowed me? How long have you knowed me? Do you think I watch that show? Are you under the impression I watch that show? <laughs> so, organization. By the way, when I started this program and we got really serious about it six months ago, I could see. Look at me now, Ma. Look at me now. I can't see shit. Stuff. And I'm deaf, which is, I don't like to tell anybody that because I'm in radio and that uh, makes me sound old. But I'm, I'm a deaf, dumb, and blind kid. But I sure play a mean pinball. So I have a box of oatmeal. And the box is yay big. It's as big as a bread box, bread basket. Remember bread baskets, Grandpa? But there's only four oatmeal. I, I like to have oatmeal a couple times a week. What? And so the box of oatmeal is down to four packets. So I look in the closet this morning to go get my oatmeal and look what I find. My big space consuming box, it's as big as a shoe box maybe. In the pantry, my shoe box is gone. Replaced by Marsha pinning four little oatmeals together. Now they say opposites attract, but the fact is sometimes samies attract. Me and Marsha are samies. We, we like we like organization. We like it clean. We like it sharp. Zip, zang, boom, bang, boom, chip, chop, chip, ching, bang, gong, ga. I don't know why I was speaking Mandarin Chinese. If you speak Mandarin Chinese, you know exactly what I was just saying. So Marsha got rid of the box, which took up an extra six inches in the pantry, and put a clip clop, a chip clip, on my four remaining oatmeals. That's organization, or as I like to call it, the double O, organized oatmeal, which brings me to Mike McCarthy. I don't know that everybody knows this. Mike McCarthy likes organization. He likes, and most football, football people do. At 8 a.m. we're doing this, at 9 a.m. we're doing this, at 2 p.m. we're doing this, at 6 p.m. we're eating dinner, at 7 p.m. we're going to mass, it's 8 p.m. We're, that's chip, chop, ching, chong, bing, bong, ching, chop. Organized oatmeal. Example. Positive example, then I'll give you a negative example. The positive example is kind of funny. The negative example brings me to the summer of trash. Positive example. I'm on the phone with a uh, cowboy executive today at two o'clock. And he says, Fish, hold on. Let me put you on hold. And he doesn't put me on hold. He just puts me on wait. And so I can hear the conversation. He comes, comes back and he goes, hey, that 4 p.m. press conference, by the way, don't show up for it. Why not? Because we're not having it. 
Why not? Because why should we have a Mike McCarthy press conference at 4 p.m. on a Monday to talk about what? I go, good point. You gonna talk about Jacksonville? You already talked about that. You gonna talk about cuts? You haven't made cuts yet. And you're right. So we're not doing a 4 p.m. press conference. Now that's organized oatmeal. Get rid of the meaningless press conference. It's masturbatory. Move it out. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it live. But the disorganized McCarthy, and I wonder if he's got a sore tummy over this. Jim Law says you can join Fish uh, Uncle Fish Premium, by the way, for $1.99. There's some fun stuff in there. Eh, support the site, $1.99. I don't know. You got $2 to spend? I don't know. I don't care. Get in there. My phone's ran off the hook. Gee whiz, I'm popular. I'm the second most popular person in this house, by the way. And among my siblings, I'm in the top six. So here's the disorganized McCarthy. And I wonder if it gives him a tummy ache. In the spring, he opened, we were sitting at the star and he openly talked about, we need to go look at a couple quarterbacks. We need to look at quarterback competition. We need to look at people around the league and bring some in. He basically said, I think they called on Alex Smith and then realized that his broken leg is still broken, which it kind of is. I think they kicked around RG3. I think. Now, they never visited with him. I just think they kicked it around in the building. Hey, what? Hey, who? And maybe somebody came up with the idea that if RG3 was your backup quarterback and he came in, you'd have to change the entire system, which might explain why Jerry the other day on 105 Through the Fan says, uh, Mr. Sean, uh, Mr. Arge, uh, just between us girls. And, uh, I know we're, uh, 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 circumcising a mosquito here, but if we bring in old Cooper Rush, we don't have to change. Cooper Rush can run our offense. You know, we, don't, we, we ain't got to change anything about our Cooper Rush offense. Because Cooper Rush can mechanically do what Dak Prescott does, not like him, but in terms of mechanics. Cooper Rush was a flavor of the week last week, as opposed to let's bring in somebody who's a completely different system kind of quarterback. Jeff Driscoll comes through here. Somebody else came through here too. So they explored it, but not very assertively. And of course, they continue to not be assertive. Now, Tuesday cutdowns, maybe, maybe a couple quarterbacks will get cut down and that'll change everything. But as we sit here today, what the Cowboys did on Sunday against Jacksonville at quarterback was the opposite of organized oatmeal. Garrett Gilbert has been the clear cut number two here for six. Eight months. He gets sacked, I think, against Houston. And all of a sudden, we don't like him anymore. And now we like Cooper Rush. So Cooper Rush gets to be the man for a week. And then Cooper Rush plays against Jacksonville. And he goes four of eight for 16 yards. And now we like Garrett Gilbert again. Boys, girls, they're making it up as they go along. You can't spend eight months saying Garrett Gilbert's better than Cooper Rush and then in 15 seconds say, oh, no, wait a minute. Cooper Rush threw a touchdown pass. Now he's better. Then the next week go, oh, wait a minute. Garrett Gilbert threw a touchdown pass. Now he's better. It's ridiculous. The Jacksonville game, which, by the way, featured an actual kid quarterback who could play. Wow. I can't tell you the number of people Cowboy scouting kind of people and others who go, he looks like Aikman and Peyton Manning rolled into one. I'm talking about guys, you scouting people that you should respect. He's like a faster Manning. He's like more athletic Aikman. Wow. Wait till they put his bust in Canton and they're going to have that hair. I wonder if he'll keep that hair his whole career. There's got to be a head and shoulders commercial in his future. So the Cowboys play Jacksonville and they play grab ass 
for the number two quarterback job, like it doesn't matter. The number two quarterback job matters. It's the 12th most important position on the offensive football team and maybe more than that. And then further adding to the lack of organized oatmeal, what do they do in the second half? They pretend like the competition's over. And they put in Ben DiNucci. I have 14 texts in the last 22 minutes. What is wrong with me? They give the entire second half on tryout day, they give the entire entire second half to somebody who will not make the team. The entire second half of a tryout game. Now listen, I'm not anti McCarthy, and I'm not even I'm not trying to be hard on Ben DiNucci. It's not his fault. This turned into the summer of trash as it regards how to find a backup quarterback. They didn't even try. The second half of the Jacksonville game should have had nothing to do with Ben DiNucci. Son, we're going to cut you on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, when you get no phone calls, which you won't, we will bring you back to the practice squad. Zolo, the fact they put in DiNucci tells you either how this coaching staff cannot grade players or how much this coaching staff just doesn't get it. How can I disagree? On tryout day, they gave they gave one quarter to a guy trying out, one quarter to a guy trying out, and two quarters to a guy not trying out. Insane. Abe Shepard, Mike, be serious. Dak won't look good until the third or fourth game. Want to bet? Want to bet? Danny, what's our offense going to look like? Spectacular. No, Tommy Buster, not Johnny Manziel. Kenny Lang, my right, my wife rolls her eyes when I walk around the house yelling, fish out. All the more reason you should get a t-shirt. Get your wife one too. From the Uncle Fish store, which you will see below shortly via the very sweet Priscilla. Russell, why do we keep him? There's better third string quarterbacks out there. there there's no the third string. I'm not keeping a third string quarterback. I'm keeping a practice squad quarterback who knows the plays. Ben DiNucci, you're in the practice squad. You know the plays. Go be scout team. And then Ben DiNucci, hey, go, we need you to go line up as a safety. Hey, Ben DiNucci, we, uh, you're a tackling dummy. Ben DiNucci, can you go give me some Gatorade? That's fine. But you don't give him a half of football to try out for a job that he has no chance of winning. Unbelievable. Kenny Lang says, I have a fish out t-shirt. The summer of quarterback trash. Cowboy star. What about Nick Mullins? Would he be better than what we have? Yes. So would Blake Bortles. Yes. So would Josh Rosen. Yes. So would Nick Foles. Yes. Want me to keep going? So would Garrett Minch, uh, Gardner Minshew. Now, Brian brought us on 105.3 The Fan today says Gardner Minshew is a bad guy. According to his gang of seven. I'm not going to argue with the gang of seven. I'm not going to argue with brought us. So the Eagles are stupid? They just traded for him. We're smarter than the Eagles? Are we? Oh, and by the way, we're smarter than Urban Meyer because Urban Meyer just spent the last six months, five months, giving Gardner Minshew a chance to start over Trevor Lawrence. Now, maybe it was all farcical. So we're smart and they're dumb. Maurice McClary with a $20 pitch and I'll compromise on Canada. If I can just get a little better offensive line depth. Colin's second neck issue in two weeks is a problem. I'm a little worried. I'm not worried specifically about stingers. I'm. You do get worried that it's this little thing and then that little thing and then that little thing. That's a worrisome. And I and Maurice, I appreciate you pointing that out. Rowan Donahue with a $6.27 pitch in. 
Why? Because that's the way Rowan Donahue rolls. Sergeant Strife arrived with an autograph from Uncle Fish. I'm reading it. It's excellent. Get yours today. Stars and Strife was a regional bestseller endorsed publicly by Jimmy Johnson, even though we weren't pals. Forward by Jerry Jones, and we are pals. And in the case of the book that you might order, autographed by the playmaker. What? Yeah, get your stars and strife. Um, there's, I've probably gotten out 400 copies in the last couple of months, and I have 400 very happy cowboy fans. So get your stars and strife. You can see the information on how to do that below. Thank you. Um, Christopher Michaels, last time we won the Super Bowl, we went 0-4 in the preseason. Chill. Well, wait. First of all, I don't think that's true. I think you've gone 0-4 plenty of times in Cowboy history and then went to the playoffs. I don't think the last, I don't think, Christopher, that's precisely true. But your point's true. But I'm not talking about the 0-4. I, I, I haven't mentioned 0-4. I mentioned the quarterbacking summer of trash you had an opportunity to do something at quarterback and maybe still do maybe on tuesday you still will you have an opportunity to get this much better at quarterback and you passed on it because i don't know because ben denucci wants new mike mccarthy's barbers aunt school teachers basketball coach's cousin that? All right. Trade talk. Uh, G-Bag Nation, and they don't throw this stuff out there. They, they pretend they're throwing it out there, but it's not thrown. It's placed precisely. Um, Jeff Cavanaugh mentions, hey, I wonder if somebody would like to trade for Brandon Knight, the offensive lineman. Hey, I wonder if somebody would like to trade for Bradley Anai, the pass rusher. Hey, says Brian Broaddus. I wonder if Johnny Hecker, the all pro punter, gets cut with the Rams and he comes back here, comes over here and joins Bones. Uh, Broadus is my guy. Kavanaugh is my guy. They are not throwing feces against the wall to see if it sticks. sticks. They are telling you something. So those are your, that's the dope on the news. Uh, Bill Matrenko. Did they go 4-0 in 89? I'm going to have to trust you. Uh, I was there, but I don't. Not only do I not remember, I don't care. Uh, Hector Vargas says, Kennedy at cornerback two. Not happening. Philip Dunn. He's got a little Hurricane Ida issue. Philip Dunn is a friend of the show. Her, uh, we hope you're okay, Philip. Hey, how about some likes? Uh, there's uh, uh, 33,000 people going to watch this thing. Uh, hit, hit some likes on there, if you please. Clayton, we're going to stroke out if Danucci is number two quarterback. Not happening. Greg Snell, Fish, is the jury still out on McCarthy? I think that's fair. Um, Troy Aikman, not too long ago, name drop, said Mike McCarthy deserves a mulligan for last year. Okay. But you don't get two. Westy, Bones has been a failure. The special teams haven't been good. It's true. The lunatic, Fish, Israel or Simi getting cut? Am I keeping a six wide receiver? I'm telling you, though, they're, if if and when, and I think they might, cut Simi. He gets picked up. He's going to San Francisco. Westy, I liked, I subscribed, and I have a book. That is the Holy Trinity. Kelly Joseph says, uh, my groin problem is not serious. Marvin Wilson is a name that people are kicking around. Marvin Wilson was an undrafted rookie free agent, and then everybody clamored for his services. The Browns are cutting him. Hey, 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 how about that? 
Uh, Brian brought us notes that he's got a knee issue and another knee issue. So don't get too excited about that. Mike McCarthy says this is the toughest time to be a coach. And I get it. You're telling, in the case of, uh, of 80 guys or so, you're telling a bunch of guys, you're not good enough. You're not good enough at football. That is hard. Um, some of these guys are going to end up being doctors, lawyers, firemen, forklift drivers, or YouTube sensations like me. By the way, that was a joke. Tough, tough deal. Um, Jason Garrett used to say that too. Having that and calling that guy in and telling him it's not going to work. Tough. Got to be done. We'll be done in the next 22 hours or so. We will keep you posted here. Find me on social media. We'll do the same thing. And then, of course, 105.3 The Fan. Uh, nobody better. Big Mac says Joseph was a poor pick for second round. Why don't we give this cake some time to bake? Wade. Straight dope. No bullsh. Dak is back. Correction. Correct. Correct. Finally, DeLunatic asks a question that I, I have hit on, so I'm glad you're touching on this. Is Dallas lucky to have a couple of COVID guys? Isn't that weird? But it's true. Having COVID guys gives you a, a roster exemption. Oh, now I got to stay because shed time's here. Shed time. $5 pitch in. Your thoughts on our offensive line holding up on our backups? Dak needs to stay healthy, of course. The backups. Well, Connor McGovern as an interior swing guard center is fine. I saw somebody say, who's going to be our backup center? Connor McGovern. Big whoop. Hey, look who's calling for the thousandth time today. Telemarketer. Telemarketer? Hello, telemarketer. Hello. Hi, good evening. This is Malcolm Watson. Malcolm, you're on live. Malcolm, hold on. Hold on. I got to, I got to, you're on live YouTube right now. Is that okay with you? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that, please? Malcolm, you are live on YouTube right now. Do I have your approval to have our conversation be live on YouTube? I think I just discovered a new way to get rid of telemarketers. <laughs> Even the telemarketer, says the lunatic, knows to cut Danooch. <laughs> no, that was not a robot. I get, um, I get, uh, today I've had 12 fakos, and they come up on my phone, and six of them have been telemarketers and they're real person. Six of them do not come up as anything. And a lot of times they say my phone number or very similar to my phone number. I don't understand it. Um, but the last time I talked politics here, nobody liked it. And I'm not going to talk politics again. But dear congressman or senator, if you can get rid of 12 people a day calling me, trying to tell me that my car lease is due when I own my car outright, you, sir, have my vote. Team Amazola, Danucci is the worst quarterback in the NFL. Nothing against, nothing against Ben. It's not his fault. They have put him, they have done the exact opposite of what a coach should do. They have put Ben Danucci in a position to fail, which is why at quarterback, for the Cowboys, this has been the summer of trash fish out.